What's up dudes and dudes to the internet, my name's Seth and today we're gonna be taking a look at Jenny LeClue, Detective Ooh. I actually had one of my real life friends tell me to check this game out because apparently he actually knows the guy who's done all of the drawing and art for this game. So I ended up checking it out and let me tell you, it's actually a real cool, interesting game that is a point and click adventure, but has a nice cartoonish vibe to it and also really, really hooks you right from the beginning with the mystery that is surrounding this mansion. So let's just start a new game right here and jump in. The way that the game is is going to be uh, interacting with us throughout is it's going to end up having our character talking, but also going to end up having uh, another character, which is the novelist talking, because we're actually playing a character inside a novel. So how cool is that, right? Chapter 13, breaking and entering. And here's our character, which is all mysterious and we don't really know who it is or anything. And we're gonna be sneaking into this guy's house. The trail led her here, which I'm assuming means that there's gonna be a little bit more of a prologue to this game once it actually does fully release. The links will be in the description for every Everything, by the way, folks, and I would also appreciate if you would hit that like button. Where once she was greeted with open arms, now only a locked door, mysterious. So is this like her family or something? I don't know, but it's got my favorite type of point and click adventure stuff, interactive point and click. So right here, we're actually trying to pick this lock. We just gotta get this hairpin into the right spot that's actually going to be turning the lock and then let go of it. And then we move on to the next section. And let's see if we can get this in there. There we go. Yes, we're in. Oh man, give me all the money. Just kidding, we're a detective. The house reeked of mothballs and damp fur, just as she remembered. It must be somewhere, she thought. And so she entered. Yeah, I mean, I guess so, sure. We already know that we entered because we just opened the door. I I'm just kidding with the sarcasm. Study of blanks house. Interesting, is it not? And now we're sneaking around the area, wondering what we can end up finding. Oh, I don't know, but it's going to be quite mysterious. Mystery, mysterious, get it? It's a double pun, not really though. <gasps> Let's activate the radio because that's always smart when you're breaking and entering and sneaking in someone's house. In a video game. Don't actually do that in, in real life, kids, that's bad. Seven, one, five, nine, seven, one. 7159. That's probably something significant that we should write down, but shh, we gotta be very quiet because otherwise Mr. Blank is going to detect us. What is that sound? It sounds like typing. Yes, the character is supposed to be right in front of us typing on their typewriter. And the thing that's actually cool, you're not gonna be able to hear it, unfortunately, folks, uh, but you can actually download this teaser demo right now for yourself. So if you want to experience this for yourself, stop the video and go grab it. It's actually really, really fun and really, really cool. But, you know, if you want to just see, see the game and see the spoilers for the teaser, well, here you go. But anyways, uh, this game, as it said, is best played with headphones because you're not gonna be able to hear all the subtle touches that are going on with this game that I can hear right now. So we've got two things we can interact with. The typewriter's right here, right? And then there's gonna be the light right beside it. He typed something that on that paper, I, but I can't read it in the dark. Well, let's activate the light then, young Jenny LeClue. Bloop. Ah, yes, this is who I am. And then she looks at the camera, which is very, very scary. All right, let's activate it now then. It smells of fresh ink and cigar smoke. Being careful not to disturb anything on the desk, Jenny read the note. Gloria, please do not read or move the book. Books, books? Like, do I even read the English language? Don't move the books. Interesting. I'm giving them the worst voices possible. So when we come over here, you can see the uh, little little tiny Sims <laughs> crystal to show what we can interact with. Uh, so many different medals for this one person. Marksman Award and also second prize for the Brownie Bake Off. <laughs> I want some brownies, so we can't actually interact with these books. They're, they're just kind of reiterating, don't move or read the books. Okay. 
But that's that's interesting. Why why would he be so concerned about? It? Oh, we can't actually interact with it because it's too dark. Let's see about the radio. What was playing on the radio before? It sounded strange, like a coded message. I didn't write it down. Normally in the full game, I would expect that you should. Jenny was curious, but she couldn't risk being caught and left it alone. No, she didn't. <laughs> All right, here we go. What a strange and dangerous decision to turn on the radio. She thought to herself, did she really though? Not really. Did I? No, I didn't. Luckily, just then the batteries died. <laughs> so that's kind of a very interesting uh, notion is because we're actually a character in a book, the game wants to progress in a linear fashion towards the story. And because of that, you interact with something like that and the writer is gonna have to try and compensate for it, you know? So like right there, we could have just not interacted with it entirely, but instead we did interact with it. So the writer had to uh, kind of write something about it, giving the impression to the player that it's more that we're actually interacting with the story and kind of writing it ourselves, you know? Ah, that was a delayed, scared reaction. Did I imagine that? Nope, did you? Let's interact with it again. Aha, why can't we interact with it? There we go. All right, what is this? Ah, I'm scared. Oh no, definitely seemed real. Did it really though? Not doing that again. And we can turn on the lamp, which we're gonna definitely do. And then we come over here and where is the last thing that we can interact with? Here it is. Okay, hmm, let's see. Now, because she's a detective, she has what I'd like to call detective vision. 16 flutes, three tumblers, and half a bottle of something else meticulously cleaned and arranged. Wait a second. Mm-hmm, methinks that bottle is dusty, like it hasn't been moved in years. Yes, because it has a secret on it. Let's actually interact with it. There's a piece of paper behind the bottle. Oh my, a clue. Clue, clue. What's that clue, bird? If I had people to interact with, I would have a puppet peek over my shoulder. Wait a minute, what was that? Hello? There it was, just as it had been described to her. A silver flashlight with bronze trim. I guess somebody ended up telling us about this thing when we ended up coming in. On the bottom was an inscription. To my handsome prince, always find your way home. I'm scared. This is it. I knew I'd find it here. It's risky, but now that I have the flashlight, I could find out why he's been so protective of his books. Well, let's take a peek and find out what it is, shall we? <laughs> Bloop! Now this is where things get really, really fun and really, really cool because it's a puzzle that is very, very complex, but also very, very, like, it, it, you end up finding it out really, really quickly. I mean, you know, myself personally, I love puzzle games. I really, really do. But the level of difficulty with this one is actually, it's, oh, it's right there for me, you know, and they really nailed it where it's, it's not hard enough that it gets frustrating, but it's just hard enough that you feel accomplished when you ended up actually discovering it. So. She's actually using her detective ability to eliminate the noise and show all the things that we can actually interact with and that are important. So there's lots of books here, lots of books here, lots of books here, but these ones all kind of stand out as the ones that we should actually check out, right? So we can interact with these books. We can zoom in, but there's not really that much of a point right now, maybe a little bit later. Scroll all the way down and we can go to the next page. Oh, what's this? The next piece of our paper, a new clue. Clue, clue. Two out of five. Looks like I'm on the right track. These pieces were clearly torn from the same paper. Not uh, now to find the rest. I know that her voice just keeps changing. I'm bad for that, but uh, whatever, that's cool. I'll move around the bookcase to find more clues. I can always step back and see the whole bookcase. So what we could actually end up doing, they're trying to show us with the magnifying glasses. We can be moving around like this all one at a time, interacting with all sorts of things just for fun. And we can always end up using our magnifying glass to kind of zoom in on things even more. If you have trouble reading it or want to read it yourself. I like the fact that it gives us the option to just zoom out. That's actually really, really handy. There's all sorts of things that we can interact with, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be relevant. So this, I'm assuming, 
is probably all of the Kickstarter people. I, I would just assume so. Honestly speaking, I'm not exactly sure. It would make sense with it all being crossed out like this, but maybe it's actually got something to do with the game. I don't know. I would just assume that's a nice little touch of a Kickstarter because that's what usually ends up happening with these types of games, right? So. Let's keep searching, see whether or not we can find our clues. We could be reading all of these books as well, just in case you actually wanted to go into the lore that deep, which I think is really, really cool that they actually made these all very approachable as well. You know, there's lots of stuff that you can end up reading and getting into, but you don't have to read all of it. And even if you do, there's not that much, technically speaking, to end up reading, which of course it would end up making the most sense for us to have books that we can read that are going to further emphasize the lore of this world that's going on, you know? So it's really, really cool. I really do enjoy these types of games, even though I don't necessarily uh, play them as much on the channel or even have that much of my own personal time to play these games. I, I really do like them. You know, these are very, very enjoyable. And the art, uh, the artistic direction is really, really neat too. I really enjoy, uh, like, this style of graphics, you know, where the, there was even like, uh, what was it? I think it was Angela, Angela something. It was actually a kid's show that I ended up watching when I was younger on like one of the Cartoon Networks. And it actually had very similar style of graphics to uh, something like this. Although this one is a little bit more cartoony. There's something else at the back of this book. All right, let's find out. Ooh, a Smith and Smith bo box. I... It's a button! Like, seriously, what's with me in the English language? I mean, I know I'm sick and under the weather, but... Jeez Louise! Oh, my! Come to Papa, Gold! Oh. I'm disappointed. Zazer. Wow, what an elaborate way to open a safe. Confidential evidence by Zazer. I know that it's Zazer because the book itself. Why is that name familiar? Wait, I know. I've seen his statue in the park. What is this journal doing here? And why is it in the safe? The reason I know it's Zazer is because ba -ba -ba -bum, it's Zazer, like laser, but with a Z or a Z if you're American. You shouldn't leave your journal lying around the lab, it says Amy. I, Dear Laser. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So this is pretty neat because all these things are kind of emphasizing, again, a little bit more of the lore that's going to be going on. So uh, it's talking about like just the various calculations that are going into the design of some stuff that we may or may not end up running into a little bit more in the future. Now, I do think that there was, uh, this happened the first time. Oh, there it is. I, I always end up losing track of the, that note right there, this one in particular, because yeah, I, I end up uh, having a bit of a hard time seeing it. So now we get a nice little puzzle right here where we just right click to rotate. You can also play this game with a controller as well. Uh, or uh, right click to rotate, uh, press E or Q to rotate it a specific way. But we're just gonna end up doing it with the mouse and just right clicking with it. There we go, we've got it. Thank you for your purchase of this state-of-the-art bookcase safe. This says I need to pull three books in the correct order to open the safe. But I thought I already opened the safe. Oh, very interesting. Unless maybe this whole bookcase is a giant safe. Only one way to find out. So this is where it's gonna give us a bunch of clues to actually discover what we end up doing because as we could interact with all those other books it would kind of give hints that it was tied to a certain mechanism while not exactly explaining the process so check the current time and make note of the hour pull the book from the zodiac numbers and the month okay so before we end up doing anything let's go check the time it looks like the hour is stuck at three okay so now we've got something that we can work with so we turn it around uh, address it by the hour. So it's three o'clock, which means we need the Pisces, March, and three. Mario, Mario, and Luigi, Mario. All right, Pisces, uh, Pisces, uh, March, and three. So let's go over here. This is Zodiac. So here's the Pisces. The book feels like it's attached to some kind type of mechanism. And then up here, we scroll over here, and we've got March of the Pigs. Very, very cool. And then down here, freedom instead of freedom, right? The price of freedom. This is really, really cool. I would love to have a safe like this in my house just because it's so neat. Ah, yes. Looks like, wait, looks like I should look at the paper. Ooh, I think I made a mistake, didn't I? It wasn't supposed to be three. Wait, no, Pisces, March, and three. 
That's very strange because I thought I just did that. So three, maybe I accidentally ended up clicking one of the wrong ones. March of the pig. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, I see what's happening. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Clock is stuck at three. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so we're supposed to do Pisces, March, and then... No, not Pisces, March, and three. We're supposed to do Zodiac numbers and months. Aha! Okay, Zodiac. Check. Number, right down here. That's what's going on. Three, and then we end with March of the Pigs. First time through, I just ended up doing that the right... Uh, the right combination the first time so i didn't think that there was actually anything to it but it, it's all right there on the paper so you can figure it all out you know which I, it's still really really cool i love the like i love mystery you know ah the old secret door in the bookcase i knew there was more to this room let's find out what's real what real secrets you've been hiding mr blank let's call him dr george <laughs> All right, so Jenny hesitated at the doorway. What secrets would she find? And what would she discover about him? As she crossed the threshold, she knew there was no turning back. Good. That's what I want to hear. It sounds exciting. Okay, so now we're in a mysterious secret room. What is all this? Home security gone crazy? And how does it all fit behind a bookcase? It looks like someone was just here. All right, so we can go over here and we can see this is actually really cool because this house only has two floors. So why does it need an elevator and so many more? And where does it go? Where's the elevator go? Probably to the basement. I've never seen a lock like this. I wonder what kind of key it takes. So I don't know whether or not this game is supposed to be in the past. And that's where, you know, a key card is actually something very sophisticated and very new. Or if it's just the fact that our character is supposed to be a, a young kid and she just doesn't have any experience with it just yet. That recording device looks really expensive. The wires run over to those monitors. Whatever it's recording, it can't be good. All right, let's go check it out. What are all of these screens for? That coffee is still warm. So that's the thing too, is so long as the little diamond right there is still on top of the object, you're gonna be able to interact with it again. So let's interact with the monitors and see what we can see. So we've got, oh, whoops, well, shh. The complexity of the controls overwhelmed Jenny. How could a little girl possibly navigate such an elaborate system? Dot, dot, dot. There are two buttons and a joystick. I'll figure it out. Hey, is that the front door? Yes, it is. We can zoom in or we can zoom out. Or we can click the camera right here. We're not going to be able to push that. It says don't push. That just makes me want to push it more. Can we actually do that? Uh-oh. That can't be good. Let's just pretend that it didn't end up working. Hello, raccoon. Yeah, another raccoon. Okay, there's nothing to see there. What did it do? Is there anything in the graveyard there? It doesn't look like it. Just a bunch of footprints implying that a character has gone there multiple times. I wonder what that's about. Oh my goodness gracious. He's got cameras all over the Arthuriton. I don't know what that even means, but it's something. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I, I've never seen that word in my life. I guess I've never seen an Arthuriton, whatever that means, right? Ooh, now this, this gets me very, very excited. So it's kind of like a museum, right? So there's all these dinosaur bones going on and one of them's escaped? That's very cool. Makes me think of the Metroid games, which gets me very, very excited. Another user has taken control. Another user has taken control. Gadzooks! Oh my gosh. No, Jenny LeClue, look out behind you! Puns, yay. So that's it for Jenny LeClue's teaser, everybody. You can check this game out for yourself in the description. Keep an eye on it, I would definitely say, because it's gonna be a real cool one. They end up showing a little bit of a teaser trailer as well that kind of gives the impression of, you know, what can you can actually expect with the full game. But we'll call it here for today and I'll leave that up to you. Thanks for watching though, folks. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more. Sign and stay epic.